So it look, does it look like, I think everybody's back. Can you tell Amy? Uh, we have most people and um, I just let somebody else in who got kind of kicked out. Um, I got I got lost trying to get between the rooms. Yeah. So, um, so first, thank you for playing this game with us. And second, can you all do me a favor and get, do do a, a hand or a raise your hand, either your real hand or your virtual hand? How many of you all actually have an exercise like this that you've already been using? Because I was getting some, I do this, I teach this as I was going in and out of rooms. How many of you all actually have something that you've used? I did this in the past, I don't do it anymore. Okay, okay. All right, then uh, Bruce, do you wanna take it over and, and check with each of the four rooms and see what, what came up? Sure, yeah, I've got some questions here. The gentleman who mentioned he uh, has done it before, is are we hitting uh, the high points that you would have uh, used when you taught taught it yourself? We are, and I and Bruce, I did send you a question. I need to see the literature on doing it nested, and also, and I I'll shut up now. And when we start oh, okay. doing the solution, I'll other issues I had. <laughs> okay, I, I heard the nested part in there. Um, we can we can speak to that. All right, some of the questions. Um, one question from Eric from Villanova would love to see some literature on linking RFM scores versus doing each independently. Uh, Eric, can you explain what linking RFM okay, scores? Okay, in other words, you have us doing, first you say recency is the, uh, is the primary sort. Mm -hmm. um, and then everything is done within frequent free, recency levels. I guess I've never seen that. And I have even more trouble when you break monetary value, you know, and I think if we go back to our Peppers International example, mm -hmm. is the person that gives $1,000 a year less valuable than the person that gives $10 a quarter? And if you do recency first, I, I, so I guess I'd just like to see the numbers. Sure, can we... That feeds right into that feeds right into something we expected someone to ask. Um, so, so good. thank you, Eric. We owe you. <laughs> um, yeah. So being a business to business um, uh, exercise we did here, yeah, you saw some big monetary value numbers there. Um, and the the quest, the answer to the question is, we don't know until we validate from the last campaign that we did. So the last business to business campaign, we may find out that, yeah, we had some big donors, some big spenders from 2004, way long time ago. Those people have gone away. In a, in a business to business world, you have, you have decision makers who move from job to job. Um, and in the consumer world, uh, you lose their interest as well. So, so it's a dicey it's a very dicey um, proposition, but let the data speak to you. Do a regression analysis, do a validation after each campaign to be able to establish, um, yeah, are those big spenders um, recent enough that we can take a chance on, on doing a mailing with them? Does that answer your may question? I, and, and may I glom on to that? So part of what we wanted to do with this fake data that you have is create things where your students will have those kinds of questions. And so by making it, what, we, what Bruce, Bruce and I tried to make this so, so simple that the, the numeric and the sorting process was so simple that they would be able to get to answers. Now, are they valid? Are they right? And that was one of the first questions that I, I said to you all in the, um, as we were sending you into the room, is recency the right thing to sort on? Is monetary value a better thing? Do we want them dependent on each other? And then if you're using a model like this, is the one through four ranking that you've got there, should monetary va value be 40, 30, 20 and 10. And again, all of these things are things that you can play with in the model, but 
again, if we keep it simple and the students get the concept and they have these kinds of things out there, mm -hmm. then we can start having these rich classroom discussions. Um, one of the things that I found when I was in and out of the rooms was that when you did your first 40, number 40 and 41 had exactly the same date. What do you do with that? And so those are questions that hopefully your students are going to say, whoa, hello, what's going on here? <clears throat> and how do we handle this? And that's kind mm -hmm. of what we wanted to be able to give you all. Mm -hmm. Although, yeah, Mary Beth. So I just had um, two comments. One is on the data itself. And given that the idea was that we were going to snail mail this catalog, wouldn't it also make sense to take all of the non-US addresses out if that's the assumption because the mailing cost is going to be much much higher mm -hmm. to do it so yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that makes and, sense. Ag and again great question for students to ask yeah so the other question that I, or rather comment i wanted to make is i've had two students who have interviewed with h and m and h and m gives them something very similar to this to do they say mm -hmm. you have have you seen these days you have x amount of inventory in a um facility you have x number of stores that you have to give it to and you have all of these you know how long it's been sitting in inventory how recently it showed up as a product is it in current season or out of season and it's something like ten thousand items they can move and so that it, this is a real example real world. that they have to mm -hmm. do in an interview. I would I would expect that your students um, are familiar with how hot <clears throat> marketing analytics are and and predictive modeling are in terms of jobs. Um, and um, you can you this is a predictive modeling tool in the simplest form we can make it using Excel. I've used Microsoft Access for years with my Johns Hopkins students, but we couldn't do that uh, today. So I, does that fit into what you were describing, Mary Beth? Um, yeah, it's the thing that um, uh, I guess sort of the, I don't want to call it a disconnect because that seems kind of mean, but the students that are interviewing for these positions at H&M, so that's the, the fashion, the fast fashion company. They are interviewing for managerial roles at the local, you know, at the store level, the division level, things like that. They aren't necessarily as comfortable manipulating these spreadsheets as say the data analytics folks are at Johns mm -hmm. Hopkins. These are more sure. of my straight up, you know, marketing, um, uh, more creative types. Well, can, can I respond to that as well? What I have told my students for years is they don't have to be that tech genius. What they need to be is a interface or a bridge between the tech geniuses and the mark, raw marketing folks. Mm -hmm. And that middle ground, am I correct? That middle ground is ripe for people to talk. Marketers have a hard time talking to techs and techs have a hard time talking to marketers. That middle bridge is so important. Mm -hmm. Great more, yeah. yeah. Do you all want to go room to room and do feedback? We've got basically 10 minutes to chat here. And I feel like um, I'd like to hear, is this a good, uh, the kind of exercise you all would like to have? I'd like to know um, where you struggled. Um, are the instructions clear enough? And so what we also sent you and uh, we will send you again is there was a set of instructions that had kind of instructor manual stuff as well as instructions that you could just hand to students. And then you've got the two databases, one without answers and one with answers. And again, we'll send you the clean in the future. Um, let, let me start backwards, room four. What did you what did you come up with? What questions did you have? What did you think about the database and <clears throat> and what what were your your takeaways? Who is in room four? Well, 
let me, okay. I can tell you that. So room four um, was Angie, Betsy, Gary, uh, Lori, uh, Mary Beth, and yeah, that was room. Anybody have any thoughts? We're all very quietly working on it independently. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you get, is there any other feedback or thought process? So I was in that room and um, my version of Excel, which should be the most recent version, does not allow for sorting on multiple columns. You can only sort on one column at a time. Mm. Mm. I didn't realize that. Then with the add level option? There was no add level option. Huh. No, and I Is tried it a Mac? It sort. I tried sort. Mine also has a, a sort highest to lowest and lowest to highest button. And none of those have an add level button. Huh. Is it a Mac? I it know that's Mac some yeah. I, well, I've noticed that because Macs for students, they um they didn't do pivot tables right. There's like functions that are gone from Yeah, Mac and unfortunately we're a Mac house because every okay. student coming into the university gets a Mac and an iPad. So oh, we're hundred percent Mac. That's good to it, know. It'd be interesting to see if it would work in Google Docs or in the yeah, um, Google Sheet. spreadsheets. Google yeah, Sheet. it might work in Google Sheets. I yeah, don't I'm hearing Google Sheets right now, and I can't get it to. And, yeah, and I couldn't. I, I, I was doing the same thing, saying, "I hope this works in Google Sheets," and I'm. Yeah, yeah, it, huh. it doesn't work on a Mac in Excel. Hmm. So, Sorry. <laughs> it may work in Google. I just got it. Google Sheets is no, set up is. differently than Excel. I'm not an expert, so. I'm certainly not. Um, how about room uh, three? Anything from you guys? You all? So Dahi, Debbie, Eric, Marilyn. Uh, right. So I, I made an assumption. Uh, we were looking at the rationale behind sorting the money in groups of five, uh, you know, with four and then two back and forth oscillating. And I said that that was to get a sampling of some of the people that normally wouldn't have been included. Was that correct? Or did you have some other methodology? Bruce? Uh, can you explain what you meant by people who normally wouldn't have been included? So you had sort money. So when you got to the monetary ranking, you mm -hmm, started yeah. off with the first five of four and then the five of two and then back to four and so forth. Correct. So um, I think it was just the way we, we were talking about doing ones and twos, just because instead of doing four, three, two, and one, because the math didn't work, we did two. No, why, why wouldn't you take uh, the top givers and give all the top, give, the top 80 givers and give oh. them fours and then the bottom and give them twos? Are you saying, Eric, are you saying regardless of what their recency score was or? Oh, no, no, no. So when you sort on frequency and recency score and then right. include money, uh, right. what you did was you had uh, five of them getting four and then you oscillated to five of them getting two and then right. back to five of them getting four. That's because you had groups of 10. So you sorted into your first 40 and then you sorted into the next set. And the so first you did a group of 40 of fours and then 43s and then 42s and then 41s, sure. right? And then you took those fours and you broke the fours down into um, 10. ten the first 10 had fours the next 10 had th and then you did the same with the threes what you were actually doing is now segmenting a segment so yeah, that's so let's sub subsorting you were so subsorting numbers so let's say my first block of five is group one followed by group two followed by group three 
in theory, there are people in group three that could have ranked higher than people that are in group two, even though group two are more recent, more frequent, and more money? Um, technically, yeah, I, I think I know where you're going with this. I think I know where you're going with this. If you look at the overlap, at the breakpoints, if you look at the breakpoints between like three and four, you will find some anomalies that don't look right. That that the. Uh, let me um, see if let me see if I can pull this. Let me see if this will help. Um, let me get get it a little bit bigger. And so, when you look at the, um, if I can move it over a bit. Uh, so no. this methodology you would have seen some people in group two, uh, sorry, group three, Trump group two. You would have seen some people in group five, Trump group four, and so it's forth. It's dependent. So the frequency is always going to be the first sort. Mm -hmm. And so if what you end up with over here in the, um, in the, and I've, I've got us on top of it. So here's, here's what you're looking at, right? So you've got, um, we've sorted the, the, the fours and then you ended up with the fours and the threes. So in the, within that, okay, is this making sense? And then- okay. Yeah, you saw a break point there uh, between the fours and the threes. Uh, okay, so the first thing we did was sorted the fours and then the threes and then the twos and the ones in the red. Sure. And then can yellow. You can, you, can you stop right there, Paula? Uh, right there. Stop. Uh, one more. Go back. One more. This way. It, um, yeah, right there. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So you see something that looks uh, well. Okay. This isn't sorted right now, though. This is not sorted top in column P. The breakpoints uh, don't make any difference because this needs to be sorted top to bottom in column P. Uh, so this is yet to be done. Correct. But, but this is this is the step where he was having a question, George, uh, Bruce. Okay. Okay. Is so why why when you did the numbering in column four, mm -hmm. did you do five and then five? And that is because because we've got these darker colors here, it may make more sense in the um in the uh, answer key, because these are the fours and you've sorted the fours. So these are fours, fours, and two, and even if they have larger monetary va values. So you get down here yeah. and recent, they were not as recent. So yes, you're still sorting within that. So this is your recency. And then this is a secondary. And so these are your final 32 segments. So, so these can are I, the most recent, most frequent, and highest monetary value. These, the second set is the most recent, most frequent, so, and lesser dollar value. Then you Paula, get- Paula, can I, can I, can I, I know yeah. we're running out of time. I, I would like to hear how valuable this will be for you and your students in using it in everyday use in, in your, uh, um, Academics, are you seeing this? Is there some way we can change this? Can we make it simpler? Can we make it different? Can we make it larger? What uh, What are your reactions real soon, real quickly here? I think that the validation of the RFM scores would be a great step. Okay. Uh, and you know, because you answer the questions that way. And, yes. And sort of emphasizing that your RFM weightings should indeed be done by those validation slash regressions, which I think is go. real world stuff, but I stay away from the real world. Yeah, that is real world. And that would be a logical next step. Thank you for that. I have a question or a comment, Bruce, about, um, I, I find that sort of teaching things like this, and I'm curious for the folks in the group who are kind of following along, but not getting the answer. What would help bring you into the conversation? So Angie, you were in our group and, and had a technical difficulty, which almost immediately took you out of the conversation. How, as an instructor, can I bring you back in 
or or others who are feeling like okay i'm not getting the right answer i'm not getting this and i'm kind of lost before you check out maybe i've got an answer for that maybe not if i understood your question properly um because it's easy to get in the weeds and get lost very often I look for a lead dog or a lead uh, student who wants to make this happen. It's, he's going to make it, he's going to make his career out of making this right and find a few of those folks and have them either in each group or uh, available after class, that kind of thing. Is that, does that address what you're asking? Yeah, that helps in real time to put people back out into groups and have them. That's helpful. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I feel like this might be a good breaking point. We've got another five minute break and then we've got Leanne coming in to talk about the collegiate maxis. And uh, so everybody go, go do your thing for a couple of minutes and we'll come back at um, 3.30. Great, and thanks. Thank you, everyone. I loved it. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Paula. Thanks. <laughs>